the globalists believe that they're contacting basically interdimensional aliens. That's, a, that's what we call demons, and that they're giving them advanced knowledge. And it's just really, really crazy stuff. And then they're basically giving advanced technology through the ether uh, to the Silicon Valley people who take all these drugs and do all these rituals to then get what they call divine inspiration through the space-time interdimensional gate. And then these demons are basically giving us technology and systems that we then build that will end up destroying us. They are literally doing rituals, they believe, being contacted what they call the clockwork elves. And everybody that basically takes the DMT that, that, that your body releases during death, and also the deepest sleep, uh, it opens up a dimensional gate and, 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 and people are there. So atheists are all becoming not atheists anymore. Once they now realize that there really is a God, that's what I'm saying. They go from being atheist to you know, going, oh, yeah. I'm a God. The shaman's here with me. And, and now this group that's inducted me into this, and, and then that's how you get into the real occult. Okay, Alex. And then all of that ends up leading into black magic and Satanism. And I did see something outside of, I mean, I saw a guy that was just absolutely uh, vibrating in and out of something very frightening. And in fact, not only did I see it, everybody saw it and got away from this guy who was very dark natured and very scary. It's not a chemical reaction, man, Cal, when you all see the same thing. The drug opens up the gateway in the brain to other dimensions. And I told you Really serious, evil, demonic stuff can swim up. A lot of people go to these rituals who are already heavily into it mm-hmm. to actually suck energy off everybody else. Yeah, and, and so I think this person- I think this guy I saw uh, changing, I think he was demonic for real. Alex Jones joins us. Hi, Alex. Hey, man, it's good to be here with you. Okay, so um, yeah, why don't you quit? I mean, I don't. I don't want you to quit. I, I like living in a world where we have, uh, you know, all kinds of people talking. I really, I'm a free speech guy. I got a free speech tattoo, and I think, you know, the most outlandish stuff should be protected. We don't. We don't need free speech for ABC, CBS, NBC. They're they're already uh, fine. We need we need free speech for some of the fringe people. That's right, but because the fringe has become dominant, we're being taken off the air because we do threaten the ABCs and the NFL. Look, the NFL wanted to force feed all its anti-American garbage for three years and take knees, and it wounded them. They lost 30 to 40 percent of their audience, and that's what, that's what the numbers show. People are tuning out of it. So the establishment thinks that they take us off the air, that suddenly people will go back to watching them. No. Competition has now been entered. The Internet is now out there. They'll no. never be able to shut it all down. It's over. The the old guard, the old establishment is done. You know, I won't watch the NFL anymore, and I won't participate. I did bet on the game and make some money, but but um, what what are they trying? They wouldn't do anything that's pro American. Uh, what what are they what are they trying to promote, Alex? I don't understand it with the kneeling and the anti cop sentiment, and and uh, they wouldn't accept military ads. So anti military, anti anything patriotic, they don't like. So what does the NFL stand for now? You were on my show last week. And I said, what do you want to talk about first? Because you've been off the air for a year, and we appreciate you coming back. You said, I want to talk about how people love Americana overseas. I want to talk about how they want that back. Yep. They've already been under socialism. Yes. And, 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 and that's why they're trying to ban me as well, is you hit the nail on the head. They can't allow classic Americana to be around, real freedom, competing in this new global order. They want to demoralize America. They want to make us hate our country. That's what you do when you're taking a country over. I mean, they say Trump can't say that we're a nation, that, that, that nation is a dirty word. That's what globalism does. Well, the word it's man, our country over. the word man, uh, I, I mean, say, be say, saying being a man is, uh, is somehow a vile and sexist or something. I, you can't yeah, say Google, be a man to somebody. Google. Google is now saying they're going to autocorrect. We try to type in the word family. They're saying that's a hurtful word. It's crazy. I'm not kidding. No, I, well, it takes a village, right? We're in the middle of yeah, a total Hillary takeover, said. my friend. With all the censorship, all the controls, all the insanity, it's happening right now. And other people are conforming to the censorship so they don't get censored. Well, I'm proud to be one of the most banned censored people in world history because the truth of what I've said is going to come out one way or another. That's why I'm really been pleased to be on the air with you here uh, in the great uh, city of Chicago today to set the record straight for, for all the disinfo that's out there. I mean, you've been on my show probably 30, 40, 50 times. I've been on your show probably 100 times over the years. We've hung out. We've done everything. I mean, you've been in movies. 
It doesn't mean that when you go on the air, now you're being an actor and you're being fake. You're a father. You're a patriot. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with me. It's just asinine to go, oh, look, Alex is in a couple of movies with Keanu Reeves and, and you know Robert Downey Jr. or whatever. Oh, my God. Now everything he says is fake. It's pure bull. How often do you talk to President Trump? I haven't talked to Trump in uh, like a year. Does Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, have undue influence over him? That's what everybody tells me. And, I, you know, there's so many rumors and so much stuff that goes on in palace intrigue that I just try to focus on issues and policies. But, I mean, I think criminal justice reform, uh, you know, that the Clintons passed uh, to give black people three times the sentence of white people, I think that's a good thing Trump did. I think pulling out of uh, Afghanistan where we've been for uh, you, you, years. Uh, Al- Alex, Alex, yeah. that may have come off the way you didn't mean it to come off. It made it, it, you, to me, it sounded like you were saying African-Americans should have longer sentences than white people. No, that's not what I said. Well, I know, but just, uh, that's what I, no, no, maybe no, I misheard. No, no. And I know that's no, not no, what you Hillary meant. Clinton, no, it was Hillary Clinton that said that black people are dogs. They need to be learned. Super predators, heal. she called super them. Super predators. Black I'm men saying. are super predators, she said. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm, I'm talking about she got a law passed in 93 with Bill Clinton to get black people three times the sentences of white people, and Trump just reversed that and got no support or no praise from the so-called leftist black leaders, okay? And Trump's pulling our troops out of these countries where they've been for 18 years, and, 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 and he's not getting any praise for that from the left, who now are polled in national polls. Uh, 54% of Democrats want more wars now and more dead troops for no reason because Trump's against it. They have gone completely insane. Is the NRA a good organization? I think the NRA overall is a very good organization. I don't think they're hardcore enough sometimes. But I love Ted Nugent and the work he does. They're on their board. Uh, and I, I don't think they should ban bump stocks. I don't think they should restrict good people having firearms. They should go after criminals. Can Trump get reelected if we don't have a wall? You know, Trump, Trump has made everything about this wall, and that's great. But I think more important than the wall is... He needs to not give all these illegal aliens amnesty that have gotten here illegally uh, because that only encourages more to do it. And you know, they vote like 60, 70 percent uh, for Democrats. Uh, and so the, the Democrats are importing unskilled uh, people to the country. Uh, it's what Trump said three years ago. They're not sending their doctors. They're not sending their scientists. They're sending uh, their, their, their poorest, lowest IQ people who've been indoctrinated into socialism. A lot of them are from Venezuela. I mean, literally communist brainwashed people. And when they get here, they're coming because they want more free goodies. And they've already made Venezuela collapse. So I think Trump needs to uh, hold, hold fast. And yes, build wall in key areas. Uh, but the media has made it about, oh, if he can't do it, he's broken his promise. Trump did so many of the things he said he would do. And, you know, he got the economy to turn back on, but then they raised interest rates uh, seven times on him. They never raised interest rates uh, under Obama. They did that to kill the recovery. Yeah, boy, it did feel like that. I'll tell you, I was had a, bought a few stocks and was doing quite well. And uh, they just kept they, they were doing everything they could to. Um, and who is this? The Fed is this, you know, to, to, to tank our economy. Uh, the was it Federal Reserve? Yes. And, 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 and who look. who runs Alex? Who runs the Federal Reserve? As you've explained to me, is not part of our government. Okay, there's two parts of the Federal Reserve. There's a Federal Reserve Act of 1913 that established 12 regional banks that are run by board members of other large private banks, and then they process the money and, and all that kind of stuff. That, that's a real function. But then the Federal Reserve Board of New York is another corporation in the Federal Reserve Act. It's privately owned, 80% foreign owned. When they set up in 1913, there's not been an audit since then, and that private group of bankers controls the monetary system of the U.S., violating the Constitution, and violating the fact that Congress private. is supposed to be in control of that. Private. And, and yeah, how many people are part private. of it? How many people? Uh, there is just a private uh, a, a board in New York, and I believe it has, what, 10 members. Wow. All of our finances are controlled by these, uh, by these 10. Alex Jones joins us. Uh, he's a very controversial figure. I've spent time with him in Austin. Uh, we, we went to a few museums and had a nice steak dinner. And uh, anyway, uh, loves his kid, loves his kids, talks about his kids, family man, uh, does amp up. This is somewhat of what you would uh, get if you hung out with Alex, but it, it's an amped up version. This is an amped up version of me. I mean, I'm aware that there's a mic in front of my face. And then as his marriage started to fall apart, and he can correct me here, uh, it was it was a very... I haven't been through a divorce, but I've been through horrible breakups. It was a very tough time. And um, Alex, are you allowed to talk about any of this, or would you you like to not talk about it? Oh, I can talk about it. I don't want to. I don't want to betray anything that 
was said off the record, but were you um, were you amazed at at your wife? Um, I mean, breaking ranks with you, and, and I, I don't know how to say it, but talking with the enemy like so gleefully uh, cheering for your demise and and really trying to hurt you. Did that? I mean, this was a woman you loved, you had children with. Was this a shocking development to you? I mean, were you amazed at how low it went? Well, I think in the annals of nasty divorces, uh, it's it's a it's a record breaker, and it's all on record. I didn't say anything bad about her, and I'm not going to say anything bad about her. But there was basically no bottom uh, to the things that were said and done, and none of it none of it was uh, true. Why, Alex? Why the vitriol from her? Um, you know, she she filed for for divorce on me, and uh, you know she had a boyfriend and. Uh, that was just basically it. And then she tried to get me back and I, like six months into it. And I said, no. And that's when, you know, she was the scorn of a woman. Uh, you know, like Shakespeare talked about, and the Bible talks about it. Uh, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. And, you know, she begged me to get back with her. And I had a girlfriend by then and was quite frankly happy to be moved out of the house. Uh, and, you know, right around that time then there were some issues and I got full custody of the kids. I don't want to get into it. Uh, but let's just say, you know, I pray for her. And, uh, you know, it seems like she kind of had a breakdown and I just wanted to, you know, get better and, you know, just be happy. And, uh, you know, she's, she, she, you know, she's cooled off from about a, an 11, you know, spinal tap level. <laughs> she's cooled off from about an 11 to about a three right now, which most people would call that three just volcanically hateful and angry. Uh, but, uh, actually, you know, it's, it's, she's, she's actually a wonderful person compared to the way she was now. You talk about gods and demons do you believe that that's what we're fighting against here i mean do you believe that that we're having a battle on earth right now do you really believe that it's clear cut that there's it's good versus evil well i'll tell you this i've always been a christian and i believe in god and i've and i've you had spiritual experiences in life but i you know i'm a, I'm a worldly guy and i kind of got away from god for a while where, where are you now uh, well in the last six seven years when i got really close to god and started talking about Jesus Christ on air and things like that, that's when all hell broke loose. And you'll find out when you really start telling people it's a fight between good and evil at the end of the day, you know, just worry about your kids' spiritual future, not so much their grades. And I'm not saying that's not important. Worry about your own spiritual future and know that there really are all these dimensions we can't see. It's been proven. All these mathematicians that were atheists now say, no, we believe that some other system has created an artificial dimension. They've got all these devices and spectrometers and things that can measure that there's a more powerful outside force holding this universe together. And there are lower dimensions and higher dimensions, and there's free will in the universe. There's been a lot of entities, a lot of creatures, a lot of things that we can't even see. We only see a limited part of the, uh, of the, of the uh, visual light spectrum, and they've proven that there's just all sorts of stuff that we can't even understand energetically going on. And at the end of the day, when I talk about how there are – from my own research and what the globalists believe, the globalists believe that they're contacting basically interdimensional aliens. That's, a, that's what we call demons, and that they're giving them advanced knowledge. Well, that's what all the ancients said when they would do black magic and things. They were getting, you know, Aleister Crowley was, he was in the pyramids uh, you know, conjuring demons. The people that were with him said they looked like little gray aliens. And it's just really, really crazy stuff. And then they're basically giving advanced technology through the ether uh, to the Silicon Valley people who take all these drugs and do all these rituals to then get what they call divine inspiration through the space-time interdimensional gate. And then these demons are basically giving us technology and systems that we then build that will end up destroying us. Can, can the good side, can uh, the godly folks tap into that same power through angels? Absolutely, and that's what they don't want us to do. And l listen, I didn't used to believe this. Then when I started studying deeply what the globalists are into from their own internal documents, that's when they got really pissed. And like when I went on Joe Rogan's show for two hours a couple of years ago and talked about this, and it was his most downloaded podcast, uh, I mean, all sorts of hell broke loose over that. Elon Musk went on and basically said I was right about everything. And then, and then, and then when he goes to these big billionaire conferences, they are literally doing rituals, they believe, being contacted what they call the clockwork elves. And everybody that basically takes the DMT – that, that, that your body releases during death and also the deepest sleep, uh, it opens up a dimensional gate and, 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 and people are there. So atheists are all becoming not atheists anymore because they're literally basically on spaceships in another dimension uh, or on some type of craft uh, with these guys. But sometimes you're strapped down on a table. Sometimes they torture the hell out of you. I mean, but that's what's happening when you take DMT and ayahuasca uh, is, that, is that it's opening up a dimension in your brain. Your brain's able to go to the fifth 
fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimension. And so you're opening up other dimensions, including lower dimensions, uh, and some really bad stuff happens. I, I want to explain something. Yes. This is what the establishment believes. This is what the CIA was funding uh, with the Unabomber and other people. Uh, and, and th- Are you talking about MK what- Ultra and things like this? Yes, all of it. We always think of contacting aliens <coughs> excuse me, with a radio telescope or contacting aliens you know, out on the dark side of the moon. That's just the third dimension. But, but, but what about the other dimensions that are stacked on top of this that we now know are there? and below us, and beside us. So, so it's infinite dimensions now, not just the 12 dimensions, constantly in a fractal laying over each other. So there's just so much life and so much energy in the universe that, that, that most of it's higher order and isn't going to try to mess with you. Alex, Alex, yes. I did an ayahuasca ceremony last, uh, last year. I did several of them. And what happened? Did you see your spirit animal? Uh, you know, I think I did. And uh, they, you know, all kinds of things. I, t- I will tell you that, Maybe 49 people, I think, and I was the one guy that didn't think it was God. Uh, I thought it was a chemical reaction to this to this vine, uh, but everybody else had very profound. Now, I saw profound things. I mean, I was at my father's deathbed, and I mean, I was there uh, in every sense of the It was like a holodeck. You talk about Elon Musk and his thoughts of you. I'd, I'd like to know, you know, he says we're in a hologram right now, that we're living in a holographic universe, uh, like the holodeck on Star Trek. To make it stupid simple, uh, is that what you think we're in right now? This is a real third-dimensional flesh and blood simulation created by God, and so l- l- let me break this down. We are basically composite uh, creatures where we have our consciousness and our soul. Okay, that, that is eternal. But then, if you look at the body, this is just a scientific fact. We are electrochemically and genetically connected to all of our ancestors, wherever they came from, going all the way back into the ends of you know, creation and, and the start of everything, whatever that really was. And so we are a genetic composite of all of those people that then in the DNA is actually a transceiver, it receives and transmits. It can then transmit into the future and into other dimensions and make contact with the spirits of our ancestors that basically resonate in us and that our body suit our Earth suit is actually a composite of all of our ancestors, like a coral reef or a or a system, yeah. a, a, a a communal system. Uh, you know, like j- jellyfish aren't one creature; it's a whole bunch of cells in a colony. And so, our bodies are genetic, time traveling colonies uh, that basically uh, continue to replicate, carrying on the hive genetics that then interfaces at a, a space-time continuum uh, electromagnetic level uh, with all the dimensions and all of our ancestors and all of our progeny into the future in a giant group collective mind. Do we go to heaven? Is there a soul? Yes. If you choose, if you choose God and God's at the top, then you, then, then, then you ascend through that, and it's basically like a light bridge where it looks like a waterfall, and you have to basically swim up it and the space-time continuum. But, 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 but you have to be loving, be good, be strong, be honorable, and not resonate with the dark. If you resonate with the dark, then you start basically going back down. I mean, I, I would use the analogy of first man, which is a true story, with um, – with, uh, uh, of the X-15, and he goes up into space in the jet, and, and he's bouncing off the atmosphere, and uh, Neil Armstrong was either about to go into space, or he was about to keep bouncing on the atmosphere and then go back down uh, to Earth. But instead of, uh, if, if, if you use a spiritual allegory, Neil Armstrong would have gone to heaven if he kept going into space, and would have gone to hell if he went back down to Earth. But at the third dimensional level, he would have died if he kept going into space. And he lives yeah. by uh, getting back in the atmosphere and going back down to Earth. So it's basically like that. And we're in a purgatory. Uh, it is a test, like all the ancients said, whether we're going to resonate with God and go to the next level or whether we're going to go down. And so what people see is God's design. And they see all the electromagnetic connections in the stars, in the trees, in the water. And they can then see with spiritual eyes past the third dimension. And they go, oh, my God, this is God. But it's not God. It's, 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 it's God's creation and just one little fractal yeah. bit of God's, God's space-time dream that we're all experiencing. Alex, uh, look, we've all heard, and I think it's dangerous, 
and I don't want to know what you think. And again, Alex and I don't agree on everything. I'm letting the man talk. Uh, and I have different theories as well, but I, I'm not here to talk to me. I want to hear what Alex has to say. But, you know, people that say, uh, you know, we're God. We're God. And, and that always creeps me out. And, and I hear it more and more from people, this idea that we're God. I don't think I'm God, Alex. I think I'm a creation. It's, it's like the Frankenstein monster right. isn't Frankenstein. Uh, are you God, Alex? No, and see, you're strong-minded, you're a Christian, so you went and saw your father because he meant so much to you. You, you in that space-time continuum, expanding uh, yeah. your perception, not, not your consciousness, but, but, but expanding your conscious awareness of just how large the universe really is, you, you spent that time to go back and see your father. You, you spent that time to try to reflect on your family. Other people see the matrix system around them, and they get on a power trip, and they say, this is God, and I'm God. Once they now realize that there really is a God, that's what I'm saying. They go from being atheist to going, oh, yeah. I'm a God. The shaman's here with me, and, and now this group that's inducted me into this, and, and then that's how you get into the real occult. Okay, Alex. And then all of that ends up leading into black magic and Satanism, and that's why they use the shaman and people who, who mean well at, at many levels uh, to to get people inducted into it, and then they basically get recruited to Aleister Crowley type cults once you get back to the United States and Europe, uh, and then now that you've opened your brain up to all this, then like uh, you know sharks to blood, the the first few times people usually don't see the really bad stuff, but once 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 you once you uncloak and yeah. once once you can see what's on the past the veil now they can see you and now you, you keep doing it very bad things start coming up through the lower dimensions swimming up like sharks to eat you know somebody floating on the surface in a, in a uh, tube or something yeah. and they'll usually uh, if they think they can trick you and, you and you're already basically predisposed to think you're god <laughs> they'll then present themselves Generally, like an elf or a, or, a, or a beautiful woman or maybe a tall uh, Nordic is how these demons like to present themselves. And they'll tell you how you're God and how all well, that. Explain everything Alex, you, your Alex, guy. Alex, they, they appear yes. at the edge. You, you know, when I did it, they appear at the edge of the, edge of the jungle. Now, I didn't have this for me, but they appear at the edge of the jungle. And uh, they welcome you in. And, and, um, and I actually have audio. This is the actual audio from my ayahuasca ceremony in Costa Rica and I did see something outside of I mean I saw a guy that was just absolutely uh, vibrating in and out of something very frightening and in fact not only did I see it everybody saw it and got away from this guy who was very dark natured and very scary and uh there were people that saw things that were so horrific. I, again, uh, and again, I think it was a, a, a chemical reaction in the brain, but, and I don't know that I put anything spiritual to it, but I did, I did, I mean, the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything. I was, I was back in time at my father's deathbed of cancer. Alex, over the years, I've had people uh, contact me, and I have an incredible nose for, for BS. I think I can tell when someone's BSing me. I can tell immediately when someone calls my radio show and they're going to mess with me. I can feel it. I can sense it. Spidey sense. You and I both uh, have interviewed a fascinating man named David Icke. And you know where I'm going with this. And as I was doing this ayahuasca, which is a, a vine, and I saw this guy vibrating in and out of a human form, I was reminded of, of David Icke and people that have contacted me over the years, and many of them terrified. In fact, one of the biggest ministers on earth... I talked to him about this, and he said, you know, I thought this stuff was crazy until I was in prison talking to a guy, and I saw, I saw his face shift. I saw it change. And again, I've had many people. I, um, I got offered serious money to write a book about this. I, I did years of research on this. And in fact, uh, a major company even optioned it to, to possibly make a movie out of it. And I, the, the more I got into it, it was so dark, and I thought so dangerous that I didn't want to go any, any deeper. Uh, and you've been ridiculed a lot for talking about these things. And so I, I, I don't put anyone on my show to, to make them look bad, but uh, you have been outspoken about it. Is, are we talking about shapeshifters here? Well, man, Cal, listen to me very carefully because this is very dangerous what we're talking about. And people listening need to understand this is not a game. 
It's not a chemical reaction, Mancow, when you all see the same thing. The drug opens up the gateway in the brain to other dimensions. And I told you, really serious, evil, demonic stuff can swim up. A lot of people go to these rituals who are already heavily into it Mm -hmm. to actually suck energy off everybody else. Yeah. And And I think this I think this guy I saw uh, changing. I think he was demonic for real. And, 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 and listen, Billy, Billy Corgan uh, has been very open about it, seeing a woman shift. Uh, saw her eyes go completely black. And, I, and, and that's, is that a different thing? People, their eyes go... No, no it's not a different thing. Completely let me, let me black. Happening. Uh, well, let me, let me just... I want to I tell people <laughs> quickly that over the years, and I'm going back to the mid-1980s, I've had people call and they were, I'm talking to my girlfriend, I'm at wherever, and their eyes went completely black. What's happening? I want to explain something. You, you, you say, oh, you're being controversial, or I'm being controversial. We're telling people what Hollywood and what the billionaires and the tech people are obsessed with. This is all they do. They're on drugs multiple days of the week. It's in mainstream news. They're not just microdosing LSD. They've got a bunch of other synthetic stuff way beyond ayahuasca, way beyond DMT. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's like, a, it's like a trip to the universe. Some people want to contact entities that basically operate like aliens and give them advanced blueprints for technology. That's what, that's what San Francisco is a research base, contacting aliens for U.S. advanced weapons research. If that's what they believe they're doing. I was told about this when I was a kid uh, because I had some family that had friends that were in advanced research projects with DARPA out in San Francisco. I heard this at the dinner table when I was like eight years old, okay? Okay, and, Alex, and, and, Alex. Mm-hmm. I was in San Francisco. I broadcast at the number one show for years. And I also heard these stories that, that they talk to very creepy grays is what military people have told me. And that um, and they don't know if they're good or bad. Um, the feeling that many get is they're sinister. Yes, yes, yes. The Presidio and that whole area is the contact zone. Now, listen, if people, you have to understand something. This is not my opinion. This is what San Francisco elite believe. So you can say it's a chemical reaction. Okay, what is it in our brain that a bunch of people get together in a city and take a bunch of advanced drugs to be in contact with aliens, and they do it enough that then people that do this enough can actually start shifting themselves because it's taking over this dimension. And that's what this is. This is an alien invasion through the computers, through the smartphones, through everything. That's the big secret. And as soon as I started talking about that, that's when they took me off the air. They're like, uh-uh. We can. And they'll never, they didn't actually, they never attacked me for this. They do not touch this, my friend, because that's the big truth, is that they didn't come from space. They came through a dimensional gate in our brains. Of course they would. All and right. so now, yeah. the big hot thing with Joe Rogan and all these self-help groups, uh, and I'm not even saying Joe's a bad guy, but he promotes it, that's, that's just like the LSD and Timothy Leary, he admits working for the CIA uh, in the, uh, in the uh, 60s and 70s to, to promote that to young people in the psychedelic revolution. Now they're going into the next phase, getting everybody to go to these big retreats, and the police turn a blind eye, even in places like Texas where it's illegal, and everybody takes ayahuasca. And then, ooh, there's always somebody there that runs into something dark, and, oh, there's some light over here, and people are then tricked into the whole deal. And that's what goes on. It's all energetic, interdimensional, yeah. Uh, I, I went to a place, you can look it up, I went to a place called Rhythmia. I had a doctor and nurses uh, to keep an eye on me. I, I wouldn't do this stuff in somebody's apartment. I've been offered to do that you know, to do that as well. It's a very hip thing right now. I tried it. Uh, I don't recommend it. Um, I didn't need to do it. And I, yeah, I, I, all, all that happened to me was I had very vivid memories uh, from my past. Uh, some some good, some were, were negative. Other people were so shaken that... Uh, they were terrified. So I know what you're saying. Um, That's because, man, yeah. you're, you're an accomplished, smart guy with a strong family and a Christian. So you have a shield up around you. And I'm telling you, people that don't have God and who don't have that tie to the higher dimension, they're wide open. Alex, people, Alex, yeah. uh, hang on, because I, I, we're running out of time, and I want to make sure I get to this. This uh, All this this uh, hydrogen collider and all of this, are they trying to... Are they trying to break through other dimensions to unleash literally hell on earth right now? Is, is there an effort to do that? I know this. They, the scientists admit that they could create something called a strangelet, which you basically see in a science fiction Star Trek came out a few years ago where there's a mining ship and he injects the, quote, red matter in the middle of the planet and it makes it turn into a black hole. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Science is trying to create a black hole into other dimensions. Is that, is yes. that what's going on right now? 
Well, that's just what, what, what I'm telling you is what the Hadron scientists admit, <clears throat> that they could create a black hole, they could create a strangelet, and they're trying to find new particles. They're trying to find particles that they basically slam uh, different radioactive uh, protons and, and, and uh, heavy metals into each other at beyond light speed in an attempt to then isolate new new uh, particles that have never been before discovered. And, and, of course, those particles will be bouncing off, they believe, in coming out of another dimension. So, yes, they are literally using giant cyclotrons, is what they're really called, yeah. giant cyclotrons uh, to, to do this. This, uh, this ceremony that the world had it's some of the most bizarre footage i've ever seen in my entire life if i wanted to direct people listening to us right now to see that what how is it labeled how could someone find it on the internet what ceremony is that you know, when they dug this big hole and they had a big ceremony and there's all kinds of people dressed as demons and all the leaders from the world are there and oh i remember this yeah. oh yeah it should have been 2001 but it was it was in the year 2000 it was in the year 2000, and it was the you know, supposedly last day of that millennium, new day of the next millennium, even though it really wasn't. It was all and, and PBS, PBS was going around the world, and they were at the Great Pyramid, and they were also going to France. And I was just sitting there watching, and I recorded it on VHS back then. It was VHS, and they were going, "We love you, anti beast. Come into our dimension, anti beast." And then they were just cutting to like you know two hundred foot demons and no no huge that, no this this is great what you're talking about no the one what I'm talking I mean that's fascinating what I was talking about was they had there was a giant hole and they were having this big celebration this giant hole they had built it was like a couple sure of years is. ago and 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 some people say they captured at this party a, a sacrifice of someone being killed you see people in, in robes and it looks like they kill a woman. And then there's well, let me tell you, they do a lot of this stuff out right out in the open. That gives them more power. They think. But listen, I got invited by by the widow uh, of, of the biggest name in rock and roll. I mean, I think you can say the biggest. Everybody can probably guess what I'm talking about. And they were trying to get me. And I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're good. But just in hindsight, they were really calling me, talking to me a lot, and trying to also the son, uh, the son of the famous person who contacted me, uh, and trying to get me on their private jet to go to this uh, event uh, in uh, Reykjavik uh, to do a ritual. This is like six, seven years ago to fire the real like Lucifer beam into space and try to bring in the real new age and all this. And I said, you know, no, thanks. I don't think huh. I'm going to be doing that. No, Alex, I, I, cause I, this will drive me insane. And, and as soon as we're done talking, I'm going to remember it. It was a giant tunnel that they're building and it may have been in Helsinki and they had a giant party to celebrate this. I'm not sure I do. Either. I mean, I remember. I mean, I remember. There's a big tunnel over in Helsinki or whatever that the the big bus and the kids all crashed into and died. Listen, listen. Francois Mitterrand got the big uh, glass pyramid that that Macron was sworn in on front of. Uh, in front of the Louvre. With six. With, with, with six. Yeah, six. I was just there. Six, I was just there. Six hundred and sixty-six pieces of glass. Right. And he he pledged it to Lucifer, and that was in the newspaper. Well, how about Christian Bale thanking Satan? I mean, you know, ha ha, but um, is good is good winning? What's happening right now, Alex? If you're keeping score, and I know you are, uh, is, are the good guys winning or losing right now? Or is it just the illusion that evil is winning because that's what they report? There is a giant interdimensional alien invasion taking place through the cell phones, through the electromagnetic radiation, through the, the cyclotrons, the, the, the superconducting super colliders. There, there are enemies, there are enemy traitors, collaborators uh, in the human species working with Satan and his fallen legions uh, at, at, at our dimensional level, but also at the uh, interdimensional level of the brain to blast huge holes into our dimension, like the Bible says, to literally turn demons loose on the earth. And the planet is under a interdimensional um, space invader attack. The book of Revelations does... Not the way you just said it, but does predict that uh, this planet will be filled with uh, horrific creatures uh, unleashed from hell. And you believe this is th th they're trying to bring that about right now. Does that also involve the, uh, the, the building of the temple in Israel? Is that part of it? All of it is a countdown.
And that's why you see the new pope you know, how, saying how do we, isn't Christian and all this crazy stuff is it's all coming out in the open. The pedophilia is all coming out. It's all coming out and they can't have me on air to talk about this at this critical point. How do we fight back? How, how do good people fight back, Alex? Good people need to get right with God and know that most of these churches are controlled by their denomination and their 501c3. And most of these preachers are, 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 are basically false prophets. People need to get on their knees and pray to God and ask for guidance and just ask Jesus to come to their heart and say, God, this is so big. This is so evil what we're facing. I don't know what to do. You, God's about free will. Demons in these systems want to trick you. They, they, they hate free will. You have to say, God, I ask you into my heart. I ask for your protection. And I ask you to send angels to protect me and my children. And I ask you to open up the, the gates of perception and give me the discernment to deal with this. And I'm on yeah. my knees and I repent. And, and if you do that, if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you'll, if you do that, the Holy Ghost will come to you. And it's real. And then instead of being possessed, by the, this devilish energy, and everybody's got this devilish energy in them, it's going to push back. But if you just push long enough, the, the Holy Spirit comes in, and the, and, the, and the evil pretty much isn't there anymore. I always say, send an email down on your knees. Don't send an email. And what you talk about, I, look, I went to uh, Harvest, one of the biggest mega churches on earth, a guy named James McDonald. And, uh, you know, I, was, I got to see behind the curtain. And what I saw was, man, um, we need to remember that Satan can quote the Bible. And Alex, what he can masquerade as an angel of light and quote the Bible. What you said is uh, is so uh, powerful, and, and I'm, I'm uh, you and you you and I have uh, discussed this stuff for years. Uh, this is what we talk about, folks. When we talk, when we talk off off radio stations, we talk about God and things and family. Um, Alex, so physically what happens, what, I had a guy on talking about, uh, this guy, Dr. Ted was on talking about scalar waves and all this, and I didn't quite understand it. So what does praying do? I, I mean, I pray and I pray with my family and, and every meal we pray and I, I encourage people to do that. Um, but I always pray for wisdom. You pray for knowledge. I pray for wisdom. I guess it's the same thing. What do you think happens when we pray, when we pray to God versus these people that are trying to create little black holes and let in demonic forces, what what happens? How, what's what's happening on the good side? Angels are being uh, sent out. Uh, 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 well, well, exactly. Uh, yeah, look, to the, protect the you operates, and to beat back the evil. Exactly. The devil operates in secret. Uh, Satan operates against free will. So God isn't going to open a channel up to you. Um, um, except sometimes your family's praying for you, then then it happens because that's the bridge. God's about free will. You have to open up the interdimensional bat signal. You know, and, and when you open yourself up to God, you, a lot of people are going to be d- demonically influenced. They're going to feel something pushing it, something in the way, something saying, don't do that, don't uh-huh. do that. You say, no, I, cr- I call out to Jesus. I call out to God. Uh, you know, m- Make contact with me. Help me. Cleanse me. Give me discernment. Give me wisdom. Please help me. Please help me help others. Please and, 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 and then it happens, and then that connection starts. And a lot of times, right up front, you'll walk into work, and somebody will walk up and start a fight with you right away. And you'll go, whoa, this is like a movie. And then yeah, I've had go, it happen. Your car I've had it happen. really mean. It is. And, you know, and, and I, I encourage the listeners to do this. Uh, it, it is something, man. If you set out today or tomorrow and say, I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be good. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to be for God today. You will not believe what happens to you. I was joking with my uh, guy here, love cheese earlier. I was saying, man, I, I, I feel, I pray. I feel great. I leave the house. I love mankind. And then I, and, and, and then, and then of course you have to go outside. Was Andrew Breitbart murdered? I think he was. And then everybody around him was so scared. Um, and, and the corner was killed. Know. The corner, you guys like me and you said, what happened with Breitbart? And uh, there was an investigation, and then that guy was murdered. By the way, yeah, we talked about a month ago about you coming on the show and me coming on the show. And, and, I, and, and you brought this up, and then I went back and pulled up L.A. Times articles where the, the coroner said, I think there's foul play. He's dead two days later from a heavy arsenic poisoning. He's murdered. And then that gets shut down, and no investigation's done. Uh, and so absolutely, they, I mean, they – Killed Andrew Breitbart. So. And Andrew Breitbart talked to me the night he died. We were working on a TV show together that you'll remember, and uh, he told me he had, he had video footage 
that the second the world saw it, it would be the end of the Obamas, the end of the Clintons, and more. And that it was so extreme and so over the top and not what we thought. And I asked him, was it this? Was it that? Was it? And maybe it's tied to what we've read in those Podesta emails. I don't know. Alex, my final question. Are you afraid you're going to be assassinated? You know, I'm not afraid of it. I mean, I think there's obviously a, a, a good chance of that. Um, they try to wind up enough crazy people or whatever to do it. But they have to first destroy my name completely and, 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 and then just create a lie where I once was. Uh, so that, you know, once I'm gone, uh, then they can capture uh, capture me and, and, and build a straw man so that I can then be an avatar or, or a character into the future. Because that's what the devil loves to do. Take somebody good, take something strong, take something that had big success uh, for humanity, and then shut it up and then build a counterfeit that you claim is that thing and then have it speak for you. I mean, like this Homeland TV show, they admit it's based on me. And, you know, he's this horrible, lying demon who hurts people and is a racist and everything. And then it's the opposite of who I am. I mean, but that's what they did. It's part of a larger plan. So, yes, they have to finish destroying me. Uh, and then, uh, then, then they do plan to either put me in prison or, or take me out. But, you know, I mean, that's just what's got to be done. Uh, and I'm closer to God than I've ever been. And, you know, uh, getting close to God for a while, a lot of really bad things happen. But you get to a certain point where it's like an event horizon, and it's just like, it's like nothing they do matters anymore, and then all these other great doors open, and then God opens up the perception to a level of just uh, just unbelievably breathtaking. And then then there's one thing you know you got to do: make sure that these little souls, these little children, these innocent people around us, make sure we stand up for them so that we can protect them and get them under God's wings and get them into the future for eternity with all these great people and our ancestors that are all waiting for us beyond the veil. Getting your protein has never been easier with Infowars Life Protein Bars. Available in delicious chocolate peanut butter and vanilla coconut flavors, these protein bars are the perfect answer for a snack on the go. InfoWars Life Protein Bars are nutrient-packed, portable protein bars for an easy-to-eat and great-tasting meal. Pre- or post-workout fuel alternative. At just 240 calories per bar and 15 grams of protein each, these bars will be your favorite at-hand snack for at home, in the car, at work, or on the go for getting nutrients easily. High in fiber and nutrients with wholesome ingredients for high-level performance with great taste, such as whey protein and chocolate compounds. These protein Protein bars can help you with the boost you need to reach your goals. Protein packed and full of fiber and healthy ingredients, InfoWars Life Protein Bars are a can't miss snack for any InfoWarrior serious about their energy. Try both flavors today at InfoWarsStore.com.